My name is Ian Millard. I'm 79 years of age. I underwent surgery on the 25th of January 2017. My uh, GP, he was the person who over a number of years had been tracking my, with my annual blood tests, had been tracking my PSA, but he noted that it, all of a sudden it was tilting upwards uh, more than it had been. Sent me for another PSA test and said didn't like it at all and immediately sent me to, uh, to, to have uh, tests with a urologist who explained what was happening and that he was sending me off for these tests. I just accepted that, hey, this is something that if there's something there, I've got to go through this process. And uh, then it was a matter of then seeing what happened with the biopsy results. In Australia, prostate cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer in men. The risks of developing prostate cancer increase with age, with one in seven men being susceptible by 85 years old. Most of the males diagnosed with prostate cancer are aged between 60 to 79 years old. While the mortality rates for patients diagnosed remains a cause for concern, the continuing improvements in diagnosis and treatment have seen the outlook for patients also improve, with long-term survival rates over five years reaching 95%. I'm Associate Professor Charlie Verrall. I'm a urological oncologist, so I specialise in cancers and urology. My main interest is prostate and bladder cancer treatment. When I started doing urology, it was, it was sort of just growing. Laser technology was just uh, occurring. There was no such thing as robotic surgery. The Western Society has the highest incidence of prostate cancer. On the New South Wales Health website, there's one in six incidents of prostate cancer of men up to the age of 85, they'll be diagnosed with prostate cancer, one in six males. Prostate cancer in its early stages often shows no symptoms, making it difficult to detect. When symptoms do appear, it is normally due to non-cancerous conditions affecting the prostate. Vigilance remains the best approach to early detection, with men in the at-risk age groups urged to maintain regular checks with their GP to monitor their prostate health over time. Should you present with symptoms or abnormalities, then your doctor will take the step to refer you to a urologist. There's quite a lot of ground to cover when a patient comes to you with suspicion of prostate cancer. It's typically a somewhat elevated PSA, and it's important to start by outlining the issues in prostate cancer. We have a paradox that most men will get a little bit of prostate cancer, but much of it is unimportant and we have a great risk of over, potentially over-diagnosing and over-treating things if we chase too hard at times. On the other hand, it's still the second commonest cause of cancer death, so there's certainly a lot of important prostate cancer out there. So the first issue I, I cover with them is that we're trying to find an important cancer while trying not to find the unimportant ones that might unnecessarily worry us. Then I have to explain to them what PSA is. Firstly, it's not a diagnostic test. It's just a red flag doesn't mean you've got a cancer, doesn't mean you don't have a cancer, it's just a red flag and we weigh up lots of other factors. The next step usually is to get a multi-parametric MRI. And a multi-parametric MRI is a sophisticated type of MRI that looks at the prostate in three different ways. And then the radiologist, who usually has to be very experienced, will, will give us a score called the PIRAD score. And it's a score out of five that tells us how suspicious any lesions are in the prostate. Hopefully there are no suspicious lesions and that means that the risk of prostate cancer is low. But if the PIRAD scores are high, three, four or five, then there is an increasing risk of prostate cancer. To come to the final decision as to whether we're going to proceed to a biopsy or not. At the end of the day, prostate cancer can only be proven on a biopsy. So the decision is, do you, the patient, need a biopsy because you have enough chance of having an important prostate cancer that would warrant treatment. For patients presenting with symptoms and blood work suspicious for malignancy, the next step is confirmation through scans and biopsy. With biopsy being the only definitive method to accurately diagnose prostate cancer,